Mark. Hello, everybody. We haven't done one of these in a while, haven't we? It's because it's been three weeks since the last SM Crystal episode. So we truncate this, but they truncated the transformation sequence of the first three sailors. I'm not sure if I, what I should feel about that, actually. Many people felt that the CGI was kind of abysmal. I don't know about that. I kind of touched on it the last couple of episodes. I think they've kind of improved on that. There are some things that I feel they can improve on, but I'm going to get to this episode in just a second, but I want to really touch up on the little things that I want to address before I go into this episode. First of all, last week, you may have noticed, no, not what last week. What am I thinking about? This is a real, really odd for me to not only be three weeks after the last episode, but to have these in a particular format, where it's first and third Saturday of every month. Now, the next time this is going to happen, we'll do, where there will be five Saturdays, is in November. So, but at that point, that's going to happen as well. So, bit of withdrawal there. However, back to what I was saying before, there were a few mistakes that I've made. One of the main things that happened in the last episode that I completely missed, and I'm not sure how I did it, was that Sailor Moon got a new tiara and a new attack, the Moonbeam or whatever. Sounds like something Frank Zappa would name his kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just how I thought about it. I mean, God, we have Frank Zappa in an SM Crystal review. Wow. Okay. And second of all, it was Mamoru who found the handkerchief, not her dad. That would have actually been pretty, really, it would actually be really interesting if it was his dad or her dad. What am I saying anymore? I'm not quite sure what I'm even saying. But the reason why I'm kind of giddy is because, giddy. Why am I saying that word? The reason why I'm like so anxious and everything, because this episode really hit the nail, really drove it home. There was not really that many mistakes in this episode, if any. There was one really odd thing that happened, but it was kind of like something that I thought was pretty cool, as well as something that fit most animes. But I will get to that here in just a second. Again, it's a really great episode that they had. Oh, but I do want to touch up on a little bit of complaints that people have had about the CGI and how toy animation is cutting costs and all of this other stuff. Again, it's a lot of money to make an episode, make a TV series, especially when you have a web series. It's not that uncommon to see people cut corners. Animation is kind of off, all this other stuff. And I know this is a storied series, it's a storied franchise, but still, we have to take into account how things are in today's economy. Still, even though things have come somewhat improved, it's still not the way it used to be. I wish it were a little bit different, but I mean, it may be just an excuse. Maybe me making up an excuse or something like that, but you gotta consider that it costs a hell of a lot of money to make these kinds of series, especially animation. CGI can cost a lot of money to make. So I, I'm not quite sure if it's better if they do use the CGI or not. I'm not quite sure in that front because if they do hand-drawn animation, it's probably gonna be a good bit of money in order to do that. And unfortunately, I think it's something you're gonna have to live with and I think they're doing the right thing is if they cut corners, cut corners on places where you're least likely to actually see it because you're so focused on the actual story and reading the subtitles that you're not really that concerned about something that's happening in the background. Some people who have read the manga over and over again have actually took the time in order to look at these things that so they know the story through and through. Now, me being somebody who's never read the manga, and I don't plan to as long as I watch the series, that way I can actually talk, talk about the actual story that is implied within the show to see if it was immersive to me, see if it caught my attention, and it kept my attention through and through. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm more concerned about whether or not the story is going to hold me through, and I will consider the quality of the animation if it is too distracting for me to look at the actual story. Now with this particular episode, I thought this episode was one where I would actually sit down and actually 
kind of look at some of the things that if I saw some imperfections. A few episodes ago, there were some issues about Usagi's shadow at the shrine, which she was missing in Nordongo. I might be pronouncing it wrong. I'm not quite good at Japanese language. I'm sorry, I'm not. But there were some concerns about that. I didn't really notice it because I was too concerned about what I was reading on the screen. And because of that, I was immersed in the story, I didn't really catch it. Now, some people would say, okay, you should catch on and that, that should be distracting to you. If it is, then it is. But don't say that everybody else should have the same opinion as you. And I'm not saying everybody has done that, but I do have a feeling that some people are going to gravitate toward that. And unfortunately, that is the reality of not just this show, but a good amount of shows that people tend to look at the negatives instead of the positives. Fortunately, there weren't a good bit of negatives here, if any, because here's where it gets to one of my favorites, which is Sailor Jupiter, which is Makoto, who, if you remember the original anime, she is the strong female who still has a feminine side, and that will really be great for any feminist who is not named Anita Sarkeesian. Let's get that out of the way right now. Or Zoe Quinn. Thank God I haven't been doxxed yet from that one. I thought I was earlier today, my Sprint 4G phone went down on LTE and I've gotten some weird, odd text messages from somebody who said I stole the phone when it was shipped from me from Sprint. I have the receipt, I have the packaging slip. So if they want to try it, go right ahead, I can prove it. But, um, but fortunately it was just Sprint being Sprint. Okay, so enough of my quarrels about my phone. Okay, let me get to the actual episode. I thought the way that they introduced her into the story right off the bat is was really good. In the first anime, if you don't remember, Makoto saved Usagi from a bunch of bullies. Here, she saves Usagi from a speeding car when she's not paying attention. I thought it was really great to show her strength and the way she is right off the bat. Not just somebody who would just fight some people off. But in both cases, that she really cares about people and she's really just trying to get along with people. And in both cases, in both the original anime and in SM Crystal, the same thing happened in which she is some sort of loner, she's self-sufficient. They didn't really touch on quite yet why she's self-sufficient and I'm not going to spoil anything because I kind of know what happens why she's so self-sufficient. There is a reason for it and there's a reason she's scared of something that I'm not going to touch on right in the moment. I hope they focus on it. Now, of course, the other big thing that they would have touched on that they actually did that came from the original anime as well that I'm glad they did again here was that when she meets Motoki at the arcade, which I'm going to get to that little conversation here in just a second because that was really interesting to me what happened before this scene. But when she meets Motoki for the first time, she's reminded of somebody she used to like and of course he broke her heart and said hey, oh I have a girlfriend already when wait uh were you with me what the hell is this about and she's just devastated about this but one of the things that was in the manga I guess because it was in this anime was that her reason for leaving the other school was changed to okay well she felt she had to transfer he in the original anime it was because she was kicked out because of fighting or, or expelled or something along those lines here is a lot different at least from the understanding i got from reading the subtitles in the anime and they really touched up on just how it happened they really did good on the flashbacks i really liked how they did that to actually show just why she's even there and to really explain it in firm detail, although there was some rushing going on here. I'll touch on that here in just a second, but the main reason why they touched on that right away, besides her backstory, is that the plan of the Dark Kingdom this time was to use the love emotion in order to trap men with this bride ghost. Now, when I first heard about this plan, my first thought was succubus, big time succubus. And that would have been a lot better because in episode six of the original anime, if you ever watch it, it was one of my favorite episodes now because of how that all that played out and the bats and the way that they presented Yuma 
all that other stuff. That, to me, was one of the best episodes of the original season when Yusagi was going solo before they introduced Amy and the rest of the sailors. I was waiting for that to appear, although they came up with something really, really interesting in which the ghost actually hypnotized Motoki and when he went into Creepzilla mode. That's basically what it was, Creepzilla mode, and he went right to Makoto and said, I love you. Of course, the reason why Makoto is somewhat attracted to Makoto is because he looks a lot like Zenpai, I think she called him, and because of that, she is attracted to him. Whether or not that leads to anything, I personally do not know. It's because she kind of is in the anime. I don't know if she is in the manga. Again, I'm going on what I see for the very first time here. Of course, she falls victim and the Guardians are led to save him or her. Well, him and her both because Motoki is hypnotized by this thing. When Yusagi gets woke up by Tuxedo Mask, which by the way is going to be the subject of the next episode if anybody had actually saw the preview for the next episode. And again, there's something about that too. I will get to that here in just a second. I'm getting to a lot of things in quote quote just a second. But I, I liked that aspect of it. I liked that she was led by someone other than Luna. I really did like that aspect. But they were led there and of course they did their best to try to stop the monster. They couldn't do that. And then Neflite goes into his little spiel about how he was able to lure everybody using their love emotion. And then comes a big speech by Yusagi. Now... Anybody who has is familiar with this series knows how well Yusagi is able to make friends with just about anybody she wants to and and this was told so well when she meets Makoto and she is able to make friends with her despite the fact that a lot of the other students are unable to because they are scared of her quote unquote superhuman strength but she doesn't see that as a detriment. Her first attraction to her, and I'm gonna get to this one too, is her smell. Of course, when she saves her from the car, and then it comes the food thing, her fascination with food, and of course that draws her to start talking with her, and one thing leads to another, and it leads to this particular scene where she makes probably one of the better speeches I've seen on the show yet. It kind of not there with the Yuna Final Fantasy X-2 speech near the end of the, that game, but it kind of somewhere near there. And then comes the flashback with Makoto and how she got her heart broken and all that other stuff. And then it's ass kicking time. And then she gets the pen and then she transforms. This, I was waiting for because I did not want them to fuck it up. I did not want them to screw it up in any sort of way because people were complaining about how they screwed up the other transformation sequences. They did like Ray's. I, I heard they did like hers. They truncated the first three Sailor transformations, which people were kind of hoping they would do at some point. But again, with the Jupiter transformation sequence, it was very awesome. I did like it. The only thing that I've been noticing lately is that the added effects drop the frame rate of the transformation sequences. Now, I'm not sure if that's intentional, if it's a detriment to some people or whatnot, but I do notice it. I don't know if it's a bad or good thing again, as, like I said before. Let me know what you think about that if you've noticed a drop in the frame rate during these transformation sequences because when they didn't use that much effects in Amy's and Yusagi's transformation sequences, I didn't notice the frame rate drops, but when they used the added effects in Rays and Makoto so far, Oh hell yeah, they've been using frame rate drops, and I'm not sure if that's because they use just so much effects there. But then comes her Flower Hurricane, I think it's called. I'm not completely sure 100% about the name of that. And then comes her Supreme Thunder Attack. I don't I don't think it's called that here. I again forget the name of it. Remember that I do these as I recall them, as I remember them, as it comes to me. So forgive me if I don't recall certain things. Hopefully I can correct them in a the future video, but 
I go by what I see because I want to get these out as soon as possible. As soon as I watch the episode, I try to get these out there. So please be advised about that. And she killed a Yuma with that attack. And I thought, holy shit, that's the Makoto I remember from the original anime and possibly from the manga. So yeah, it does not take much to get me excited for her. The other one that I would be excited about seeing is Sailor Pluto because I think she's probably one of the hottest sailors around. I mean, good lord. When I first saw what she looked like, I was like, holy shit, they got that down. They know how to get men to watch the show, do they? But she was the elegant kind of sexy and I really enjoyed that too because she was calm and collected and she knew what she had to do and she didn't take no shit either. So I was saying, hey, she's pretty freaking hot. Speaking of men, they actually brought up Ray's distrust of men. That to me, I thought they were gonna touch up on that on episode three when they introduced her. I didn't think they'd take this song to do that because if anybody is aware of one of the criticisms about the original manga is that it is very fast paced. Some think it might be a little too fast paced, which is just way rushed and way to the point and doesn't really elaborate on the main characters that much. I would like for them to actually go into detail about her father. If anybody is aware of this is that she resents her father after she sees her father going out and becoming a politician and she hates politics as a direct result of that. I touched up on that in a previous episode. I can't remember which one it was, but I do remember talking about that. And she doesn't really doesn't play for the other side of the fence either. She's not a lesbian, which I can't say the same for Yusagi. Every girl who has become a sailor that she meets, she's attracted to. She is astonished by either her smarts, which is Amy, or her looks. This time, Makoto, her first reaction is she smells nice. What is it about her that she's not telling the audience? Of course, I'm just speculating here. Of course, she probably thinks, okay, it's just a friend and and the original anime always had this thing where she's at the right place at the right time or right place, wrong time, depending on your outlook on it. She always has a sixth sense about people and apparently they carry that over or they carried it over from the manga to the anime. But wow, what a way to have a sixth sense. Holy. Now the last thing I do want to touch on before I close out this episode, some people, some fans who have been watching this show are speculating that why they kept Jedi alive. Now we didn't see any other kings in this episode, they only saw Nephlight and of course Beryl. But one of the things that people were thinking they were going to do is the king romance with the sailors. Now, that was only in the RPG Another Story, and people have been speculating whether or not they were going to do that storyline at some point. Now, it seems as though that might be where they're going at, because if you noticed Nephlight before he escaped because his plan failed, he talked to himself, I think he was talking to himself at least, as if he knew her on a personal standpoint and I'm not sure if anybody else caught the manner in which he said it. Now I'm starting to think that that's probably where they're going to go although it's not 100% written in stone. Let's keep in mind that these things can change. We may be wrong, we may be right, there may be another storyline that they may be planning, there may be a whole new storyline. I've been hammering on the fact that they've also teased Barrel Heel Face Turn as well in another story and then PGSM. They might be doing something like that here. We don't know. That's something I wouldn't mind seeing, but then again, that's just me. But again, we'll see how that goes and it does mean that some people are going to have to look at the subtitles instead of trying to look at every single thing and make sure there is absolutely no mistakes around. But there is my review. There was not a lot of issues with the animation. There were a few things when Yusagi was rushing to the aid of Makoto. But then again, that was just something that is a element of anime in general. I've noticed that in a lot of animes, the way that they have lines going across the screen when they run. 
anybody who has ever seen anime probably know what I'm talking about there. And when Sailor Jupiter transformed, her face was a little bit more angular than before when she was just Makoto. So, other than that, I didn't really catch anything, and this time was kind of looking, but that kind of distracted me from the subtitles, as I said before. And again, as I've said before, there might be things that I didn't catch, because I'm trying to remember things off the top of my head. Most things I remember, but there are some things that I might miss. Again, I'm only human. Humans make mistakes. As a human being, we all make mistakes, so... If I made a mistake somewhere, if I missed something that you think I should have missed, leave a comment below. I will try to get to it as best as I can. And thank you very much for watching these things and giving me advice on what I can do as a video maker in order to improve this stuff. I thought about some of the things that I could do in order to improve the quality of these videos instead of just having the intro play out again and again and again. Hopefully I can think of some sort of other thing to play on in the background. I've been thinking about the Band Presto game. I've been thinking about the Another Story game, although the SM Another Story, I may do an actual DP does. That was the big surprise I was going to do a little while ago, and I think I might just let a cat out of the bag right in the moment, no pun intended. Oh, there is one thing that I almost forgot to mention here. Before I go off and end the video, I forgot about this. See how I'm only human? I make mistakes too. Usagi got the Crescent Moon stick already. She's already the leader. It took the anime, the original anime, a little while to get to that point. Although I think by the time Makoto was introduced in that anime, I think it was the second episode that they actually designated her as the leader. Here, right at the end of the episode, they made her the leader right then and there and they gave her that thing just suddenly. Also, the next episode it's going to deal with is Tuxedo Mask, A Friend of Foe. Which basically means we're going to get, I think, an episode without a sailor. Which the last one will be Minako, Venus. Which if they're going to introduce her in the next episode, that basically means that they didn't show who the next sailor would be or what the next episode would be right before the end credits roll, which they've done in every episode up to this point, which I found it was kind of odd. Unless the Crescent Moon thing is the teaser in a way. I'm not sure what you would call those things before the end credits roll. They kind of hint at what the next episode would be and then they do the end credits. And then until a few weeks ago, they didn't even show the previews for the next episode on Hulu Plus. Now they suddenly are showing them. Thank God for Hulu. But if they're going to show the next sailor in the next episode, they certainly didn't hint on it, which... I gotta think perhaps we're gonna see another one of those kinds of episodes where we have interaction. But now I think I've gotten everything out of the way. Hopefully people appreciate the longer videos. The last couple of episodes I've done on this series haven't been that long because I haven't really had that much else to say other than the episode recaps. If you notice that the actual episode recaps are not that long in the other videos, but I do have a lot of other stuff I did want to say about certain things, either about the video series in of itself or about other things that have to do with my channel. Which, by the way, thank you very much for making episode 6 of the Dark Power Special Report the second most watched video on my channel so far. The view count is rising and rising and rising on that. If you do not know, if you're just coming for the Sailor Moon stuff and you don't know what that's all about, that has to do with the controversy involving Zoe Quinn, Depression Quest, and how Total Biscuit got involved in all of that. And that's why when I said something earlier about my Sprint 4G phone suddenly not getting data, I thought the worst there because there is a bit of history and speculation about what has happened to people who have tried to call her out on that certain thing. That is the second most watched video. The most watched video is Act 2 of Sailor Moon Crystal, my review of Act 2. Maybe that will get eclipsed by Episode 6 of Special Report. By the way, for those people who had watched that video, I do a follow up on episode 8 of the Dark Paris Special Report about what has happened since then. So if you watch that, go watch episode 8 of the DP Special Report and 
you will get some follow-up about that and my thoughts about the social aspect, the personal aspect of that whole ordeal. And if you don't know what that is, please go watch both videos and get caught up on all of that stuff because I really do like conspiracy stories that kind of interest me. And that is a real life conspiracy story that has so many different aspects and that rabbit hole goes down so far. Also, one more thing, if I don't get to it before this Monday, Viz Media has announced that they are going to be putting the new dub versions of the original Sailor Moon anime, the 1992 anime, the uncensored, uncut dub on Hulu starting this Monday, and they will be doing a special midnight slumber party thing where you can ask questions, you can, and they're going to also be putting them on, I think, episodes 1 through 28 I believe I'm not sure of the release schedule of them but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be putting them on rather quickly a lot quicker than they've been doing the subs which I wish they would do them four at a time instead of two at a time I'm not sure why they have been putting them on two at a time there is one thing I do want to touch on before I go about that is that on the press release this media said for a limited time for the subs and the dubs. They haven't said that before. I've been told that they have done something like that with another anime, but I'm not sure if they did what they did here, which was they didn't say for a limited time before, now they are. So hopefully Viz Media can clear this up because whatever the other anime is, I'm pretty sure they said for a limited time right off the bat. I at least hope they did. So hopefully that can be cleared up and sorted out. And hopefully if it's for a limited time, they don't take it off there when they release the DVD and Blu-ray. That might be a little bit lame though. I could see that happening. Even though if you're a fan, you should buy it anyway. I'm pretty sure anybody who is fan would probably go and buy that anyway thank you very much for watching and if you like it please subscribe please share like favorite do that other stuff and two weeks this time for the next episode hopefully this is not the last video i do before then there obviously will be more of special reports if this whole zoe quinn thing keeps going on which it has been and i hate to keep hammering on the feminist and gaming thing but that's really all there is to talk about is the zoe quinn thing first news is concerned the gaming news is concerned because there's really not much else going on unless you want to talk about amazon buying twitch tv which hey i don't mind at all as long as it continues to be a competitor to youtube although i consider daily motion to be a competitor to youtube anyway there you go my name's dark power and that just happened